So I'm trying to build a pole barn completely by myself without spending any money. It takes a little bit of creativity to get that done. Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and today we're going to be starting to put up headers and build the roof on my new woodshed, which is a 33 foot by 12 foot pole barn style building. This morning, I went to the lumber yard to get all my hardware, my fasteners for connecting those headers. And I was looking at all the different options from construction screws to lag bolts to regular framing nails. I actually bought some framing nails. Then on the way home, I was thinking I have a framing nailer, an air powered framing nailer. And heat index is over 100 degrees today. I've been having some, some problems with my back. I pulled a muscle in my back and I don't want to overdo it. And I was thinking, how could I make this all easier? And I decided that I'm going to set up a mobile power station that I can transport around on my forks and run that air nailer down here where we don't have any power. So that's the first thing I want to do before we start attaching any boards here. So when I had the idea to do this, my first thought is I always have pallets laying around. I'll just stack everything on a pallet. I thought that's not going to be very secure. Like my air compressor I'm going to use is pretty tall and I'm going to have to find a way to kind of strap that down. Then I remembered this man basket. It's got these sides on it and I can put a ratchet strap around that and really lock it down better and make this a semi-permanent setup until the next time I need this basket. Now we've got an air compressor. The next thing we need is something to power that air compressor. I've got this 7,500 watt Champion dual fuel generator. It's a fantastic choice. It's also really heavy. It's messy. You have to buy the, the fuel for it. And it has a bigger footprint that's gonna take up my whole workspace. So what we're going to use today is the Anchor Solix F3800. For the last time I talked about portable power stations in a video, I was kind of a negative video and I kind of did a rant on how I think that as much as I love having one of these, the price point for what you get just isn't there yet. They're still too expensive, but they've come, this unit right here has come down a lot in price since I got it. And this is the nicest, most capable portable power station I've ever seen. I've had this one for, I don't know, six months now. Ben, I've, been, I've had it a long time. And when it came in, I fully charged it and I parked it right here. And anytime I need to do something in this area, I run a cord out. I roll this out of the garage onto the driveway. Like when I installed the bucket hooks on the tractor, I ran the grinder off of this. I think I've aired up maybe five or six tires and I've still not taken the solar panel out of the box for this. It has a massive battery capacity. It runs 220 volts, 240 volts. So I can plug this cord in right here into this unit. It's a standard RV plug, 220, 240 RV plug. Plug it into that box on the wall. I can run everything on my house that isn't 220 off of this because that's how I set it up. So if the power goes out, no fuel, no gas, no mess, no wires, all I do is come down here, push the on button and the on button on the side, then flip a power switch on my inverter box. This runs my whole house. I keep saying whole house. It runs all the lights, all the plugins in the house, everything that's 110. I did not make the choice to wire that plug into my stove and my heat and air unit and things like that. I didn't come out here to make a video about this product, but if anyone is interested, this is the Anchor Solix F3800. And when I got it, it was over $4,000. Now it's under $3,000. This thing is kind of heavy. So the battery pack is currently 91% charged. This is a pretty good size air compressor and I just let all the air out of it. 
I want to see how much of that 91% remaining battery it takes to completely fill this tank. So I let every bit of air out of that tank to do a little test on this. And it said that was drawing 1500 watts. Now that's about what a large table saw draws, 1500 watts. After running that and filling this large tank to 130 PSI, it said on the screen that it could run at that power draw, the amount of draw it takes to run that compressor for 2.1 hours. And filling it up dropped this from 91% down to 87%. But if you think in an eight hour day running an air nailer, the compressor is probably only going to run two hours without having solar panels hooked up to this. You could run air tools all day long off of this on one charge. Once I got it over here, I went ahead and lifted it to full lift height of the machine so I could get a feeling if I decided at any point of this process that I wanted to work out of that basket instead of on a ladder, I could see how high does that basket go on the mini skid steer. Looks like I could get most of the work done other than actually attaching the tin on the roof. All right, let's get some wood and get some work done. Everything we've got here is free lumber that came off of beams that were being thrown away and I took them and I milled them up on my sawmill so all I've got in them is a little bit of time. Now that I've got all my materials out here, I took measurements on every single post and out of my eight posts, the shortest one, actually by quite a bit, is this one right here. It's 10 foot, eight inches. And I was wanting the front of the building to be at least 10 foot, which allows for at least eight foot on the back of the building if I have a 212 slope. And that looks like what the plan's going to be. The ground's close enough to level that I'm pretty sure if I have the top of my board, the top of my header, even with the top of this post, and then run a level across, I'll be able to maintain that height all the way around. So that's what we're going to try to do. Now these boards are rough cut hardwood and they're going to be heavy. So doing this by myself with a sore back, I wanna be smart about how I do it. So what I'm going to do is clamp, put a clamp on each end that the board can rest on. So I'll put a clamp up there, set one end of my board up, and then walk it up the other end and then put another clamp on it. So I'm never trying to lift the full weight of that board or carry it up a ladder, really. I've got a feeling that in the comment section, you guys are gonna tell me a hundred ways of getting these boards up here that are easier. And maybe I'll take that advice and do that on the next one. But for today, this is what I came up with. Now I'm gonna check the height on this end, make sure we're not sticking up above our post. Pretty much level right there. So we have this end clamped, we have that end clamped, and we're pretty much even with the top of both. You can see we're level here. I was pretty proud of myself getting that first beam put up there, so much so that I almost forgot I need overhang on this side. I think I'm gonna leave 18 inches overhang it's because it's going to have wood siding and I don't want that to rot any faster than necessary. So I'll put a clamp under each side and then get up there and try to scoot that down. Oh, so I guess I'll go ahead and say that I understand how painful this 
watching me do this is for a lot of you. Because there are two types of people when it comes to things like this. One group feels like there's a right way and a wrong way, and I'm doing it the wrong way, and that's hard to watch. I totally get that point of view. The other side of that coin is the guy like me who says, good enough is good enough. And I always just make it up as I go. And everything I do or build usually ends up working out pretty good. It may not be as good as you could do it, but it ends up being good enough for me. For instance, if I had any common sense, I would have cut this board to length before putting it up here. But I don't. And I bet it works out all right. I can, I can cut it from up here. I also considered another possible avenue that I was thinking about using a constructed beam that would be doubled up two by sixes instead of a single. And if I wanted to double up on two by sixes, I could construct the beam in the air instead of building this heavy beam and then trying to lift it. And if you build a constructed beam, you're gonna have overlaps, intentional overlaps. And to do that, that means that one side of the beam is not gonna land squarely on one of these beams. And so doing that, I wouldn't want to cut that off even with the beam. I would want to leave it sticking out like it is. And doing it that way allows you to attach that first layer of the constructed beam directly into your post. So I thought about an alternative way of, of constructing the beam up in the air, but I think that's not what I'm going to do. So now we'll see if we, we kept level with all that changes. We are still level. We'll put this clamp back on and we're ready to put some nails in this sucker finally. Oh yeah, that's a beaut. Even little things become a hassle when working by yourself. Like this one I want to pre-cut before putting it up there. I've got no way to hold the tape measure on the other end. In theory, I could measure the post down lower. That's based on the assumption that I got them perfectly vertical. In a category of things you sh probably shouldn't do, I clamped the tape measure to the post. And we are going 146 inches. Okay, on the second header board, I was able to butt these two up tied up against each other where they've got a good joint and it looks like we're too high on that end, which is a good thing because we can fix that. Because I put it at the top of the beam hoping that my last beam wasn't the shortest, my last post. So just drop that end down a little bit, we can put some nails in it.
I started to think as I was on that ladder with that last bay being longer than the other ones plus needing the extra 18 inches, I may not have any lumber long enough. I have to, may have to run the mill again, but my span there was 148 plus 18 inches for the overhang makes 166. I measured the first board here, 166 and a half. It's like randomly, the boards I had were the exact right length. So sometimes things just work out, I guess. So the bottom of the header on this side of the building is at 10 feet. So with the 12-2 pitch, the bottom of the header on the back side will be at eight feet. But rather than measure eight foot on this side and just put up a header, I'm gonna drop down two feet and bring a two by across this way, a connecting board, which we'll need those anyway to put our, our siding on. So I'm gonna bring that first connecting board across at eight foot high and level it out and try to see if that comes out to about eight feet over here. Our ground's not completely level, but that's the methodology I'm gonna use. So I'm waiting on a couple of new leveling tools I want to try out, but I just, I don't like to wait. When I want to do something, I want to do it. And by measuring down two foot off the front and then leveling that post, then I measured from there down from that girder and it's eight foot on both ends. It's going to be pretty darn square, square enough for me. So I think the next thing I'll do is snap a chalk line from this end board to that one, and that will be the height of the back. Inside the building, I will have a eight foot six inch ceiling on the back, 10 foot six on the front. The tractor is eight foot two inches. And that means I can park it in this shed if I want. Really happy with the progress. To be honest, it feels like I'm really slow and I should be getting more done, but it also felt like I wasn't sure if I could do this by myself and it's getting done, so I can't really complain. Mainly, I appreciate you guys. I don't say it enough, but I truly appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to watch these videos. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.